So anyway, so section 8.5 partial fractions. And once again, this is a review from college algebra. We did partial fractions in college algebra. Um, and I do wanna, before I even begin, I do wanna uh, list uh, some of the things that we need to know for partial fractions. This is, like I said, it's just a review of algebra. If you remember, I mean, I'm, we're gonna see this uh, here, but if we have x plus two and x minus five, something like this, um, and we try to integrate this, it's not easy to integrate. Uh, so what we do is we try to solve this. We try to split those, those, those these denominators apart there. Um, and uh, for partial fractions, we try to split this thing apart and make it something simpler. And if you have, a, normally you factor the bottom. So step one, always for partial fractions is factor uh, the denominator. Okay, this is in factored form. When it's in factored form, uh, a factored form, um, we write the, the, the number of, it's kind of hard to explain, I guess. Uh, the number of parentheses, the number of factors that we have down here, we have an x plus two uh, and we have an x minus five. What we do is then we put an A up here and then we use the next letter B up here and we're trying to solve for A and B. If anybody remembers these from partial fractions. So yeah, we try, go ahead. I just, I just kind of remember doing that. Okay, yeah. Um, and so that's one rule. If you just have individual factors, you put an A and a B up here. If you had something like this, X minus three to the fourth power, if you have a factor and it's raised to a power, what you do is we're going to put four fractions up here. Uh, the first fraction is X minus three and then we use a. The second fraction, since this is the fourth power, we put x minus three squared, b. Uh, then we put x minus three to the third, c. Then we put x minus three to the fourth, d. So whatever this power is, we start with one power, two power, three power to whatever the ending power is. Normally you have two, maybe three. I just extending it out by saying four and showing you this rule. And we're just putting these A's, B's, C, D's on top, and then we'll solve. And once again, uh, I know this PowerPoint shows you solving it, but it's all spread out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna solve uh, four or five of these problems in the homework. So that's one rule also. So if you have a factor to a power, uh, you start with the fa uh, power one, power two, power three, until the end, and you put A, B, C, D on top like that. Um, and then there's one more. If I had uh, X minus three, this is factored form, and then X squared plus uh, seven. Um, first, we're gonna look at the X minus three on the bottom, and we put an A here. However, the second term is, is, has a power of two or more, and it cannot be factored. So a quadratic that cannot be factored, you put the whole thing down here. But the difference for this partial fraction is we use the next letter, which is B, but then that next, this, this first letter here in this uh, non-factorable, uh, bottom, we put an X, BX, and then plus C, we put, use the next letter. So when you don't, when you can't factor a quadratic down at the bottom, you have to put two letters there, and the first one always has an X. Um, now, I could have wrote this, I could have wrote this like this. I could have wrote this first, X squared plus seven, but then I would have had to put AX plus B. Uh, and then I could have put the X minus three 
and that's then the next letter C. So I just wanted to show you, if you have a quadratic that's not factorable, you have to put two letters on top and there has to be an X next to one letter. So this is all, once again, from college algebra, it's called partial fractions. And then we solve for A, B, C. We solve for these letters um, and it, it'll be easier to, to uh, integrate. So that's just to be very beginning, just to show you. And these slides kind of tell you that, but it's they're all over and it's messy. So it's just it's just a lot uh, if, if you don't put everything on one slide. Uh, so we look here once again methods for partial fractions. Oh, let me go back up here. Uh, so what we want to do, step one is always try to factor the bottom and the bottom factors to x minus three, x minus two. Uh, so that's the beginning. You, you're going to factor uh, factor this because if you try to integrate this, by the way, if you try to integrate that, you can't integrate it. Uh, U is x squared minus 5x. You see du would be 2x. There's no x up here. Um, so it, it's, and then you could look at one of your rules to see if that does anything. Um, but so if, if you can't figure it out, then we're trying to, we're going to use a partial fraction. So we factor uh, the bottom. And I think they take us through more here. Um, so they factor the bottom and then they put an A, it, once again, an A. Well, well, they don't, they're, they're not showing you how they're using partial fractions yet, I guess, but they're do, they are showing you, uh, oh, actually they do, even though we don't see it, uh, they skip all this work, they put an A here and a B here, they solve for A and B, once again, I will show you that, how to solve here in a little bit, um, and this is the answer when they get it, they ended up with A equals one and B equals A uh, I guess one also in this case. Um, and so it makes this part very easy. This integration is just natural log of X minus three. And this integration is just a natural log of X minus two. And do you see this becomes a very easy integration when you can split that up into, in, into partial fractions. So, I mean, that's the goal. Once again, I am going to go through the, all the algebra for partial fractions when we get to the actual homework. Um, uh, here, if you had this polynomial on the bottom, uh, they want you to factor this out and they show you uh, they took an X to the fourth power out here. Uh, they took a negative one out here, and then that was x to the four minus one, and then x to the one. This factors to this, and then this factors to this. So if you look at all that, uh, the goal is to get as you know all the factoring we can. And then if I wrote it out, and I think they're going to do this on the next page. I don't know if they're starting that or not but I have X minus one on the bottom. Um, and then we're gonna put an A there, the first letter. The next one is X plus one squared. So we have X plus one, but then we have to put X plus one squared. Do you see it, it has a power of two? So we have to put the power of one, then the power of two. And then and we put a B here and we put a C here. But the last one is a quadratic that cannot be factored. X squared plus one is quadratic that cannot be factored. So we put the next letter D with an X plus E. So a quadratic that cannot be factored, um, you need two letters there and the first one has an X. So this is the setup for, 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 for using partial fractions. And then we're going to solve for A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, <laughs> gets a little crazy. Once again, I'm going to show you this in the homework. I apologize here, but uh, they did they they did it all right here. You see, they they go through the whole process. The x minus one, 
with a, then an x plus one squared, you have to put the x plus one, then the x plus one squared, and then the x squared plus one that can't be factored, they use dx plus e. Um, so once again, here are, I mean, this is what they're showing you, what you need to be doing, factor to the denominator, a linear factors, you get a, b, c, and they're just showing you a, a, a. And then if you a quadratic uh, factor that can't be factored, something that can't be factored, uh, you're using two letters. Okay, so uh, they're gonna take you through this whole process here. Um, and I will, I will actually take you through this also. So this is how you do a partial fractions. And we have to find A and B. What you do is multiply each term by the denominator. So the denominator is x squared minus 5x plus 6. I'm going to multiply this first uh, term on this side by that. Uh, uh, a gets multiplied. By the way, you could have just, uh, this factors to x minus 3, x minus 2. So uh, I'm going to put x minus 3, x minus 2. And then for B, I'm going to do the same thing, x minus 3, x minus 2. What happens is this all cancels and we're just left with 1 on the left-hand side. Here, the x minus 3s cancel and we're left with a times uh, x minus two. The x minus twos cancel here, and we're left with b times x minus three. So we multiply everything by the denominator, and then we don't have a denominator anymore. And we have to solve for a, b, and c. We have to, or just a and b. Our goal is to find out what a equals and what B equals. Um, if you remember, is, is this sounding more familiar to people? I'm just, just checking, hopefully. Hopefully you guys have had yeah. this. This, this is tough if you've never seen it before. It really, it takes a lot of practice because there's different ways of solving and different things we have to solve. So now I'm going to make X equal something and you can make X equal anything you want. But our goal is to try to eliminate the A's and B's so we A or B so we can solve the other. So if I just say X equals two, because I notice if I put a two in there, I get a zero. So if I say X equals two, then I get two minus two, I get zero here. If I put a two in here, two minus three is negative one. So that becomes zero and one equals negative one times B is negative B. Divide by negative one and B equals negative one. So we found one of the answers, B equals negative one. We found one of the answers. Now we're gonna find the other answer. Um, and this time I'm going to make X equal three because I see it, a if, if I put a three here, a three here, I end up with one equals three minus two is A to the uh, A times one. Three times three is that just becomes zero. Uh, so one times a, so a equals one, a equals one. So what happens is my partial fraction, this right here becomes a is one over x minus three and b is negative one. So negative one for b, x minus two. And now See, we because we wanted to integrate this, and now we can integrate these individually. And this is the natural log of x minus 3 minus the natural log of x minus 2. And it becomes a very easy integration when you use partial fractions and break it up like that. Okay, so I think the rest of the slides are going to show that. 
I really should have looked at this point ahead of time. Uh, but I wanted to concentrate on the homework here. Uh, once again, they're showing you how to get each one. You, you make x equals to three, make x equals to two. And then you put it back in, uh, you put it back in. And at this point, they're not showing you the integration, but at this point, now you can integrate. You know, we wanted to integrate this. We use partial fractions, found this, and then the integration is easy now. Okay. Um, here, uh, once again, factor the entire bottom. You always factor everything you can first. And X factors out of there. Here, nothing factors out. Um, so we have three things on the bottom. So we're going to do first the X on the bottom, uh, then the X minus one on the bottom, and then the X squared plus four. We put an A here. Um, then we put X minus one, we put a B. But this, once again, is a quadratic that can't be factored. It's a, a power of two or more and can't be factored. So we have to put two letters there, C and D. The C needs an X, CX plus D. And now, uh, once again, we do the same thing. We multiply each of these uh, by the denominator. And I'm just going to show you real quickly. I think they're going to go through this. You multiply it. You see the X cancels here. So what's left over is X minus 1 and X squared plus 4. If it's letting me do this. Hang on. Uh, the B, uh, X minus 1 cancels. So we're left with X times X squared plus 4. And then here, the x squared plus four, we're gonna multiply this by x times x minus one. Uh, so now we've multiplied everything by the, the denominator. And let's see what else they go. So they, yeah, they go through that process and then they go through the process of solving it. Uh, you can go read through this, but I'm gonna actually go through the homework and go through the solving process here it you see, even here on the PowerPoints, it takes up a lot of room. Uh, what happens is this is what the solution they got. So if you look, now you can integrate each one individually. Uh, integrate each one individually and, and see how that works. Uh, this uh, is not too bad. Let's see what they have here. Oh, there we go. So natural log, natural log. Uh, here, you see this is u, so this is du. So that's also natural log. Uh, and this one isn't. Do you see, because this is x squared, d, if u equals x squared plus four, du equals 2x. There's no x up here. So we have to use something else. They use one of the rules in the 100, and it's the arctan. Remember, u squared plus a squared. Uh, they use one of the rules in the arctangent, uh, and this is what they ended this is what they ended up with. So it, it becomes easier to integrate because this this is in, in a nightmare to try to integrate that. You can't integrate that. You have to use partial fractions. So once again, uh, we're going to break them all up. And then uh, once we have it all broken up with partial fractions, then we integrate. Now, I got a quick question. Yes. Um, so where it says two over x and then it's subtracting um, to the next one, is it because the denominator is subtracting the x minus one? Is that what makes the sign? Um, no, no. It, it makes the sign because the answer uh, to b was probably negative two. 
Oh, like when you solve for each letter. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. The, the, uh, and, and we're going to just go back and verify that if anybody sees a B is negative. Let's see where we can do it. There it is right there. B is negative two. Yeah. Okay. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. And then they give you some guidelines. This is the last slide. They give you some guidelines and you can look at, look at these guidelines. Uh, uh, but usually, uh, I mean, when I, if I'm going to, there's going to be one of these on the show your work. I, uh, I almost guarantee it. Uh, and it's not going to be a really, really hard one. It'll probably be something similar to one of the ones I do right now in the homework. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to do about at least four of these in the homework. So let's go to 8.5. And here's uh, the homework. And the first one I wanted to do was number two. Well, I don't know what just happened. What is that? Oh. I swear, I keep on clicking on so much stuff. All right. It's not letting me. I guess it's thinking. Give me a second to think. Okay, so here's number two. What? Here is number two. All right, even though the work is there, I want to go through the whole process. So this bottom does factor to x plus 5, x minus 5. And this is a very basic uh, one. Uh, so we start off with an x plus 5, and then we have uh, x minus 5. Uh, in the first one, we're going to put an a. In the second one, we're going to put a b. Uh, and these two uh, equal each other. So now we multiply uh, each, uh, each term by the denominator. You multiply by x plus 5, x minus 5, multiply by x plus 5, x minus 5, x plus 5, x minus 5. Uh, when you do that, all this cancels. and you're just left with the one. Here, the x plus fives cancel, and I'm left with a times x minus five. That's supposed to be x plus five, so the minus five is left. Here, the minus fives cancel, and we're left with b times x plus five. Uh, so this is where we're at after we multiply each term by the denominator. Uh, and our goal, once again, is to find A and B. Um, so picking number for X, and I'm going to say X equals, uh, and I want to cancel something out. So if I look at this, I say X equals 5. X equals 5. When I put a 5 in there, I'm left with 1 equals A times 5 minus 5 is 0. Uh, B, 5 plus 5 is 10. Uh, and I end up, that's 0. So I end up with 1 equals 10B, divide by 10, and B equals 1 over 10. All right, so now I'm going to do the other one. I'm going to erase this stuff on the bottom. I'll give it a second. And this time I'm going to say x equals negative 5, because that will cancel out the other one. If I put a, a negative 5 in there, uh, here b times negative 5 plus 5 ends up being 0. Uh, so I end up with 1 equals negative 10a plus 0, because that's 0. Uh, divide by negative 10, and a equals negative 1 tenth. All right, so now we just rewrite our, our 
partial fractions. And we're rewriting, uh, we're rewriting this part right here. A is negative one tenth over X plus five. B is a positive one tenth over X uh, minus five. So we're doing that top. Um, and then uh, we end up integrating this. And first you pull out the negative one tenth, and you're left with this. Pull out the positive one tenth, and you're left with this. And then you integrate. Integrating this, you get negative one tenth natural log of x plus five. Here you get one tenth times the natural log of x minus five. And don't forget the plus C. Okay, so this is okay for me. Show your work. They take it one step further. Uh, and it's kind of like one of those rules that we talked about last time with logs. Um, and I'm gonna show you what, what they did to get this. Uh, hopefully, I don't know, hopefully you 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 see it, recognize it, but if not, it's no big deal. Let's take this one tenth out of here, and I'm just going to put the one tenth way over here. For oh, we're going to factor one tenth out. How's that? We're going to factor one tenth out. When you factor one tenth out, you're left with a negative log x plus five uh, plus natural log of x minus five. Uh, and this, remember, the number in front of a log is a power. So that's really a negative one power. And so that goes to the bottom. You see, that's a negative one power. So that X plus five goes to the bottom. This one stays there on top. So if you remember, uh, you multiply these two together when you add natural logs together. Uh, so, but this negative power brings it to the bottom. Uh, so this is what you end up with. But on a show your work, uh, this is what I would get. I mean, uh, I would be happy with that. Uh, on a multiple choice, hopefully they they would put this down. But if, if it was a multiple choice test, you have to realize then that this negative is a negative in front of the natural log, which actually gives it a negative one power, which flips it to the denominator. That's why that X plus five went down uh, to the denominator. Okay. Everybody okay with that one? I mean, that wasn't too bad. I mean, it was it wasn't too e hard uh, picking two numbers for x to isolate uh, the the variable out of there in, in solving. Uh, they're not all that easy, but they're not all that hard either. Um, so that was number two. What else? Um, we're gonna do number three also. Okay, let's do number three. So first thing we do is factor the bottom and it looks like an X factors out of there. Then I had left with X squared minus four. So that factor, that bottom factors even more. X squared minus four is X minus two, X plus two. So this is the factor denominator. That's the factor denominator. Um, and we're gonna have it A over X plus B over X minus two uh, plus C over X plus two. So we there's the A, the B and the C. Um, and once again, this is our denominator. Uh, when I multiply, uh, when I multiply, uh, the denominator there, we have something on the top. So if I multiply this by the denominator, the denominator cancels and we're left with X squared plus 60 X plus 60. Uh, then um, I'm going to multiply uh, this by the denominator. The, you see how the X is 
will cancel. So for A, I need to do it in black. For A, since the X cancels with that, we're just left with X minus two, X plus two. Um, because we multiplied times all three of those in the end. Wait, yeah, the A, the X's cancel. For B, the X minus twos cancel. So for B, we're left with B times X times X plus two. These are, this is the one that cancels with the denominator on the top. Um, and then for C, uh, we're left with X and then X minus two. Does everybody see how I did that? Or, I mean, do I have to go through and you say, hey, well, this is what we did for each one. These canceled, you see, this is left. For this X, X minus two, X plus two. The X minus twos cancel, we're left with the X and the X plus two for right here, you see. That's what happened. So this is where we're at and we have to solve for A, B, and C. We have to find A, B, and C. Um, and so it might take a, a little bit of trial and error. If you look here, you can pick two and negative two. And I mean, oh, you can look over here for clues. I wouldn't look over here yet, but I see two and negative two. But when, every time there's just an X, there's also a zero you can pick and zero is a nice one to pick because usually it cancels out a lot of stuff. So I'm going to start off with zero when X equals zero. Uh, so if I put zero into all of the X's, every single X, uh, I'm left. I'm going to do it in a different color. If I put zero in here, I put zero in here, I'm just left with 60. Uh, if I put zero in here, zero in here, I'm le left with negative two times two, which is negative four A. If I put zero in here, zero times everything just cancels out, it becomes zero. If I put zero in here, everything uh, zero times C times X minus two all becomes zero. So I'm left with 60 equals negative four A, take the negative four to the other side. And I think I get negative 15 equals A. So there's uh, my A answer. Uh, now we have to put the other numbers in there. We, we found A. 15. You see, it's just tedious algebra work is all it is. Uh, there's not a lot of calculus here until we integrate. Uh, so let's, the next one I'm going to put in there is a negative two. So if I put negative two in here, negative two squared is four. Negative two times 60 is negative 120 plus 60. Uh, negative two in here, uh, put a negative two in here, turns it to zero. So all this turns to zero. Uh, put negative two in here, all this turns to zero. And put negative two in here. In the last one, I get negative two times negative four, put a negative two here and a negative two here. I get negative four times a negative two is a positive eight. So I end up with uh, negative 60. I think I end up with 50, negative 56 uh, e, uh, plus 8C. This becomes negative 56. And then on the right side, I got 8C divided by 8. And C becomes negative 7. Now, my question to you is, why did I get C negative seven, but they got B negative seven? Can you tell me why? I got C negative seven, but they, the, the book got B is negative seven. Can anybody because tell me they, why? They switched their B values on the denominator. They use, uh, we're using a different, we're using X times X minus two. Yeah. Well, X times X plus two, and they're using X times X minus two. 
So it switches the values. Yeah, e exactly. It just depends on what order you put it in. I'm still going to have my C is negative seven. I'm still going to have the negative seven above the X plus two. Do you see they're going to have their negative seven above the X plus two. So it just, I mean, you could put it in any order you wanted to. You're still going to get the same answer as the book. Uh, it just might be in a little different order. And that's all it is. So the negative seven should still go above uh, the, the same one that the, the, that the book does. All right, and so finally, uh, so we have two answers. Uh, we put uh, X equals zero and X equals negative two. And now we're just gonna put X equals two. Two squared is four. Four times, uh, uh, oh, this two, if I put a two in there, I get four, put a two in there, I get 120. So this is 184 if I put a two in there. If I put a two in here, that turns to zero. If I put a two in here, I get four, I get eight B. If I put a two and a two, I get four times two is eight B. To put a two in there, that turns to zero. Uh, 182 divided by eight. That's not right. Uh, did I did I add something up wrong? Two, 120, 180, 184 divided by eight. And I get 23. 184 divided by eight. And B equals 23. And sure enough, uh, I got 23 and they got their C 23. So uh, we're pretty much B is 23. So now that we have these, we just plug them back in to our, uh, our partial fractions up here. We plug those back in up here. And I'm going to erase all this stuff down here. You see, it's is is you're gonna it's gonna take a page for every problem that you do. Uh, so the A I have negative fifteen over x. The B I have twenty three. X minus two and the C I have negative seven. Once again, the negative is the sign here. Uh, so C I put negative seven x plus two, uh, and then when I integrate each one individually, I end up with negative 15 natural log of X uh, plus 23 natural log of X minus two uh, minus seven natural log of X plus two. Now they're not in the same order, but the, you see we got a negative 15 in front of natural log of X. Uh, and we have a negative seven in front of the natural log of plus two and x plus two and then the 23 in, in there. And this is what we end up with. Well, that's so far, I mean, solving for A, B, C is not that bad. Let's try another one. Let's see what, oh, number five is the next one I picked. <laughs> so number five, if you look at uh, the, the denominator, factors to x squared, x plus one. We factor an x square out of here, then we're have a, we have x square. Uh, I could really try to be a little bit neater. So that's the denominator. So uh, you gotta be careful now. Once again, uh, we're starting off with the six x uh, square plus one x. Uh, minus four. If I multiply by the denominator, all this cancels and they get the top. Uh, now we have to set up the A, B, and C. Um, can anybody, oh, you guys, the answer is right down there. Damn it. <laughs> uh, so the first one, I'm looking at this X square. 
uh, remember a power an, an X with a power, you have to go the one power first, then you have to go to the next power and it stops at two because this is the next two. If it was a three, then we do one more X three. Uh, and then we got to go one more with the X plus one. We put an A here, a B here, and a C here. So this is the setup for, uh, for partial fractions. You, if you have an X to a power, power two, power three, you have to go first to the X to the power of one, then the X to the power of two, wherever it stops. This is power two, it stops there, then you do the next one. Um, so now I'm gonna multiply by the common denominator which is this right here. When I do that, I'm left with x squared plus uh, 1x. I don't know why they put a 1x uh, minus 4. Uh, here, for a, we're missing 1x and an x plus 1 that goes here. If I multiply by x uh, squared times x plus 1, one of the x's cancel, so we're left with x, x plus one. For b, the x squares cancel, and we're just left with the x plus one. Um, and for c, we're just missing the x square. All right, so from here, uh, I see I have the x's in there. Uh, so zero is a good start, x equals zero. If I put zero here, put zero here, I am left with negative four equals, put a zero here. This whole thing becomes zero. Zero times everything is zero. Put a zero here and I'm just left with one B. Put a zero here, I'm just left with zero. So B equals negative four. So we're trying to find A, B, and C and my B equals negative four. All right, so we have one of them. Oh, I X equals zero. So now I want to look in here and see what I can cancel. If I put a negative one in there, it cancels out a lot of stuff. So I'm going to put negative one. Uh, put negative one in here and you end up with six. Negative one squared is one. Six minus one minus four put negative one in here, the whole thing turns to zero, put negative one in here, the whole thing turns to zero, put negative one in here, it turns into a uh, positive one C. So I end up with six minus five, which is one, uh, one C equals one, so C equals one. And yep, they got the same thing I did, good. So we have one more we have to put in there. We have to find the last uh, missing piece. Um, now this might be, oh wait, we put zero and we put negative one. Um, so here it's a little different. So this is, this. do you see? I can't see another letter. I use zero, I use negative one. I can't see another letter that will cancel a lot of stuff out. Zero is there, negative one is there. We already used those. We have to find A. At this point, you can use any letter you want, any letter, any number you want. Um, I, I say keep it as low as possible, and so does the book. They use one, so let's use a positive one and see what happens. If I plug one in here, I get six plus one minus four. If I plug a one in here, I get A times one times two, I get A times two. Uh, if I put a one in here, I get uh, B times two. If I put a one in here, I get C times one. Okay, so, but, we're, we're trying to find the missing piece. We're trying to find A, what A equals. We already know B and C. So here, six plus one is seven minus four is three. Uh, and we get two A here. We know what B is. B is negative four. 
from up here. So negative four times two ends up being a negative eight. Uh, and then C is a one. One times, if I put a one in C, one times one just equals one. So I'm gonna take the negative eight over and the one over, and I end up with 10. Uh, add eight and get 11 and subtract one, I get 10. And so when I divide by two, A equals five. And that's how they got five for A. It didn't matter. You could have put five in all the X's. You still would have got a five for A. You could have put 20 for all the X's. Your A still would have equaled five. It didn't matter at that point what number you put in. But do you see, we had A and B already. So might as well plug those A's in. I mean, we had B and C already. We plugged B and C in and it helped us find A. You, at that point, you could have plugged any number in um, and then plug the A's and B's in. I mean, the B's and C's in and to solve for A. So we have all our, our partial fractions then. We have everything we needed. So we're going to plug that back in to the original partial fractions that we had right here. And A equals five, B equals negative four. Everybody see how I put the negative down here is the subtraction. Uh, and then C equals one. Uh, and then we integrate. Uh, and this integrates to five natural log of X. Uh, this becomes, if you look, I mean, you can change. I'm going to, I'm going to, this becomes integration of four X minus two. So to integrate that, you add one. Uh, and I get positive, uh, I get a negative one. So I put a Neg and we had a four there already. So then I put a negative one there uh, and then I get uh, X one over X, uh, or I just get X to the negative one. Uh, add one and you get a positive one. I mean, you get a negative one, you put the negative down in the bottom. Here, you just get natural log of X plus one. Uh, so this becomes five natural log of X minus minus changes to a four. Uh, and since it's x minus one, you can just put the x on the bottom, natural log of x plus one. So it just makes the integration a little bit easier. Uh, and then uh, if you look, they squeeze the two, this was out in front, and then they squeeze these two. When you add them, you multiply uh, uh, this five becomes the power of five here. Uh, and when you add these two, you multiply, uh, or you, you can squeeze them together and adding, adding, adding them, the natural log of X to the five. I'm missing something. This is, yeah, this becomes this. All right, so now we have to figure out how they get from here to here to here. Uh, oh, you have to multiply. So. Yeah, yeah, that rule, this, so this is the rule. I mean, it's, they, they don't show you all this algebra stuff. <laughs> this becomes, hang on, I'm trying to make some room. I'm gonna to try to do it down here. This becomes right here, natural log of X to the fifth uh, plus the natural log of X plus one. Um, and the rule is when you add two natural logs together, you actually uh, squeeze them into one natural log and multiply. So that's, uh, that's another natural log rule. To tell you the truth, I'm happy on a show you work with this right here. Uh, it's only when you have to go to uh, a multiple choice, and if they have the answers that look like this in a multiple choice, where you have to uh, manipulate the natural logs together uh, to get that answer. And we still had the four, the, the four over X sitting in front. 
So yeah, you got to remember all those law goals. So that was number five. And there was one more I wanted to do just because the solving is a little, it's, it's one of the trickier ones. It's still not hard, but it's one of the trickier ones, the solving. And I, I wanted you to see all possible scenarios. And I don't think I can give you all possible scenarios. Uh, but uh, most of the scenarios possible. So I have one more I wanted to show you. Number six. So for number six and X factors out, then we're left with five X plus one. So this is the factor for the denominator. Um, so we are left with seven minus X squared equals uh, then A over X. Uh, and then we're going to add, uh, oh, something's not right. This is an X square. There we go. Did everybody see what I just did? That was an X3, so this should be an X square. This is a quadratic that cannot be factored. And you have to remember that quadratic that cannot be factored. We're going to have two uh, letters on top of it. And the first one has to have an X. We used A, so now we're on B and, and C. So this is the setup here. Uh, and uh, now we multiply everything by the common denominator. And the left side always stays the same. Uh, the right side is going to be A times 5x squared. Plus 1. Uh, and this is going to be bx plus c times, we're just missing the x on this one, times x. Okay, so this is it. Um, I use x equals 0 first. Uh, when I plug 0 in, I get 7 equals, put a 0 in there, I get a times 1. Uh, put a zero in for X. Everywhere you see an X, we're putting a zero. That just all goes to hell because there's a zero that turns everything to zero. So our first answer is A equals seven. We're looking for A, B, and C. A equals seven is the first answer. All right, next, uh, I used x equals one, so did they, x equals one. Plug one in and I get, do you see? Um, now the question is, why did the book use one? And, and uh, I should have asked, why did they use one uh, for the second number? Or if you can think of a better number, tell me. Can anybody, I mean, think of a better number other than one? Do you see, uh, there's nothing that makes these zero other than zero. You, uh, you know, zero makes the cancels things out and we already use zero. So the qu next question is what is the next number I use? And since there's nothing else that cancels out that turns things into zero, um, if that's the case, then you can pick any number you want. You can pick any number you want. And the easiest number to pick is one. <laughs> it's easy to do the multiplication and the math with one. So we're going to use one. Uh, if I put a one in there, one squared is one. Seven minus one is six. I put a one in here. I get five times one is five plus one is six A. Uh, put a one in here. I get uh, 1B plus a C. Uh, and then times one, it just gives me B plus C. If I put a one in here, uh, it just gives me one times this. So this is what I get. Uh, we already know A is seven. So I can put a seven in there uh, and six times seven is 42. Uh, six, if I take the 42 to the other side, I end up with negative 36. 
equals uh, B plus C. Everybody see that? So I didn't eliminate, I didn't find an answer because there's nothing that canceled everything out. I did not find an answer for B or C, but I do have an equation. So we're gonna save this equation. I'm gonna save this equation up here. And we got that equation when we plugged in one. So I'm gonna erase everything and plug a different number in. Uh, I might as well pick something easy like negative one. When I put negative one in here, negative one squared is one, seven minus one is six. If I put negative one in here, I still get 6a. Uh, if I put negative one in here, I end up with a negative b plus, oh wait, plus c, hang on. Uh, and then we have a negative one here. So this becomes six equals 6a, and we have to distribute the negative. We get a plus b minus c. So we had to distribute that negative. A is seven, 42. Uh, so we take the 42 over and we once again, we get negative 36 equals B minus C. So there's my second equation. Uh, here's um, negative 36 equals B minus C. Those are my two equations. So. Uh, I'm going to erase this part down here. And I'm going to bring these two equations down. Negative 36 equals B plus C. Negative 36 equals B minus C. And I have to find B and C. Well, let's just use the elimination method. Negative 36 minus 36 is negative 72. I'm just using the addition method or the elimination method. B plus B, 1B plus 1B equals 2B. C minus C cancels out. Divide both sides by 2, and B equals negative 36. So there's... B equals negative 36. Now, uh, in elimination, you pick, uh, or the, uh, what I, we just did, the elimination or the addition method. Uh, if you find one answer, you plug it back into any one of those equations, uh, get the 36 to the other side, uh, 36 plus 30, negative 36 plus 36 equals zero. So in this case, C equals zero. And here are my three answers, finally. Uh, so here you had to have, create two equations, then use the elimination method, also known as the addition method to solve for B and C. We did that uh, and that's what we got. So let me erase this now. Uh, and we're going to rewrite our partial fractions. A is seven. B was ne oh, negative 36. Ooh, I, I'm going to start it off like this. Plus B is a negative 36 X. C is zero. And we have five X plus one. So you can rewrite this seven over X. Uh, minus 36x over 5x squared, uh, and we want to integrate now. And this becomes a 7 natural log of x. Um, 5x squared becomes u. Uh, the derivative of u becomes 10x. So this 36 is out in front. If you look at this, this 36 is out in front. Uh, and uh, then we're left with this and 10. Is the plus one on 5x squared? Uh, oh, thank you. 
that's still everything stays the same uh, other than that plus one thanks um and so uh we we need to put the 10 here uh for the du and so then we put the 10 down on the bottom here uh and so this is integrating du over u which is just the natural log of the 5x squared plus 1. And this was just 7 natural log of x. And we have the minus 36 over 10, which reduces to negative 18 over 5. Yeah. And that's what we got. We got safety and we got, yeah. And oh, no, I didn't. I forgot to put the plus c at the end. <laughs> I always do that. I can't find my pen. There it is. Plus C at the end. Uh, so you see that solving that this this solving was a little bit more difficult because you you didn't find the B or C in that second uh, try. You just ended up with an equation. But that's not the end of the world. Pick any other number. You'll get another equation. And then solve using elimination uh, or use substitution. Uh, whatever method you want to solve that. Um, the whole goal is to make the partial fraction uh, an easy an easy integration. Uh, uh, and I think that's all I had uh, for that. You see, it's all algebra. It's all, it, I mean, hopefully you had this in, in, in algebra. I remember, remember at St. Philip's, uh, I mean, I haven't taught the, the college algebra, the 1414, the STEM college algebra in a while, but uh, I remember some instructors just skipping this last section, the partial fraction in college algebra. It was always the last week of school or the second to last week of school. And some teachers would run out of time and not cover that. Uh, and it would always piss me off when I taught the calculus because they have to know it. Uh, and so uh, next semester, I'm actually teaching a college algebra. I'm going to force cram the partial fractions down their throat. <laughs> um, so you have to know this. Um, it, it's, it's all algebra. You see, it's all just solving for X. And, and then the integration part is the easy part. I mean, if you try to, if you try to integrate uh, number six just from where it's at, uh, unless you can find a rule in the 100 rule, uh, it's not easy just trying to integrate that. So we know we're going to use the partial fractions to try to make it uh, easier. All right, let me hit stop recording because I think that's all I had for today.